So we're connecting with Trans Frontier Africa. It's a nonprofit conservation company, which is based in the Balule Associated Private Nature Reserves that form part of the Greater Kruger National Park. So they focus primarily on ecological research and protected area management and partner with several local and international research uh, institutions. So just a, a little more here, when the rhino poaching crisis emerged at Balule Nature Reserve and it became a target, Transfrontier Africa realigned to tackle this challenge. So they took a multi-pronged approach uh, to, and developed it as a way to address the problems and research, uh, socioeconomic, technological and tactical solutions were developed and implemented. So the Black Mambas is an all woman anti-poaching unit and the Bush Babies environmental education programs uh, are two major programs that they run and we're going to uh, talk to today. So joining us first, we have Felicia Mogakanish joining us. She's a Black Mamba Sergeant. Uh, so early detection and rapid response is all that stands between poachers and the wildlife. So the Black Mambas are the first line of defense providing boots on the ground and are responsible for the early detection of poaching insurgents through monitoring and surveillance during daily patrols. So I'm going to bring Felicia in live with me right now. Hey, Felicia, how you doing? Felicia, can you hear me okay? I'm good, and you? Oh, perfect. There's, there might be a little bit of a yes. delay. Awesome, Felicia. Well, it's so great to have you joining us live today. Uh, we're really excited to learn a little bit more about the work you're doing. I'm looking forward. All right. So uh, why don't you go ahead and share your screen uh, and then we'll we'll dive in. Right. I see it coming up now. Perfect. We're good to go. My name is Felicia Mrakani. I'm the sergeant of the Black Mambas anti poaching Unit. The unit was formed in 2013 when the rhino poaching was on the rise in South Africa. The program is part of the National Environmental Monitor Program, which was originated, initiated by the Department of Environmental Affairs. So our, our funding company is Transfrontania Africa, NPC, Non-Profit Conservation Organization. The Black Mambas operate in the Greater Kruger National Park. That green is the Kruger National Park itself. And light green, Greater Kruger. We work in Balule, which is the Association of Private Nature Reserves. Currently, we are deployed in four areas. It's Olfant West Nature Reserve, Kriki Nature Reserve, Ekutulian Conservancy, and Hood Spray Endangered Species, where our canine units are deployed there. The Black Mambas APU model is different from so-called traditional APU models. We work in the big five area totally unarmed. We are on the front line of protecting wildlife, show the bottom part of the pyramid. We are eyes and ears of the reserve. The next level armed response team which deals with crime scene investigations, the top ops room management. Our team consists of 23 female rangers. Our Bush Babies Environmental Education Program program is run by five educators and community officers. And finally, we have four armed backup staff members. Our mission, wildlife crime prevention, that means we are trying to make the reserve the most undesirable and risky area to poach. We do not 
wait for poachers to come into our reserve. Or we do not wait for poachers to come in to catch them. We prevent them from coming inside. We are trying to develop patriotic community on our borders. We want people to see that protecting local biodiversity and security jobs in the reserve is beneficial for anyone, for everyone. I mean. These poaching cases happened many years ago, as you can see the pictures. Our job is to do everything so that it does not happen again. It requires complex, holistic approach. What exactly do we do to prevent poaching and illegal wildlife trade? We patrol the reserve and create visual presence. The poachers have to see the reserve is looked after and that rangers are always alert. We do early detection and gather information because we are the eyes and ears of the reserve. We are the first to notice suspicious activities, find human tracks, and report them to our ops room. We do regular snare sweeps. We go to the bush, search for wire traps, and poachers set up to catch animals for bush meat. We do roadblocks in the reserve. Many cars, including those of building contractors, come to the reserve. Our job is to search the vehicles for wildlife products that may be inside. Uh, for example, rhino horns, ivory, pangolins, and also illegal weapons. We do compound search to check if there is anything illegal that the contractors may have. As part of our community outreach program, we join the bush babies at local schools where we share our stories with them and explain what we do as rangers. Our K9 unit patrols would spread endangered species center to protect rhinos and other endangered animals. During the pandemic, we also launched food security campaign. We raised funds for food parcels for 90 families in our target communities. Within 12 months, we raised $8,000 and delivered 990 parcels. Why Black Mambas are unarmed? The core of our project is strong and healthy issues. We cherish all life and cannot place the life of an animal over the life of, an, of, a, of a human. Poachers are also fathers. Orphans families can de destabilize the community and cause possible revenge. Killing someone can cause PTSD. And we do not want to have that. We have children at home, and we cannot pass this trauma and baggage to them. It is unfair towards them. It is also unethical to kill an animal for self-protection. We are on their territory, and we are there to protect them. Knowledge of animal behavior is our weapon. If previously poachers would be role models, the times are changing. Now rangers are becoming role models. Why has this been effective? For the reserve, we create disruptive landscape with our presence. That is why if poachers cannot get in, they will find a way to commit another crime elsewhere. Being under pressure, they will expose themselves and will be easily seen and caught. For the community, we build the relationship by working with children, their parents and grandparents. This is a long-term multi-generation investment. We are happy to make opportunity to grow our skill set and contribute to the bigger picture of wildlife conservation. We help with animals that break out the reserve. Some of us learn beekeeping from our partners, Elephant Alive. And some of our colleagues, two of our colleagues, went to do a field guide training at Eco Training. And some, one of our colleagues has a charity back at home in the community of helping orphans and people who are vulnerable in the village. How, was, how has our life changed? We are breadwinners. We respect and we have dignity. 
We have pride and confidence. We have new skills to share with others. We have a new identity. We are family. By the way, in 2015, we received United Nations Champion of the Air Award. One of our rangers was recognized. At, in 2021, one of our rangers was, was recognized as a highly com commanded ranger by IUCN. Juggling between ranger work and family, we still can be more every day for our planet, our families, and ourselves. All pieces of the puzzle should come together to build up future for all life. So thank you for listening to my presentation. I will pass it to our manager of the Bush Baby Program, Louis Maifela. All right, Felicia, thank you so much. That was an awesome presentation. I'm gonna tuck you backstage for now, but we're gonna bring you in uh, in a little bit and we'll, we'll, we'll have a few questions. Thank you so much. All right, so as mentioned, we have a second speaker coming in on deck to join us and spend uh, a little bit of time with us today. We've got uh, Luane Mayafala joining us. She's the manager of the Bush Babies Education Program. So it is where learners, the babies of the community, are learning about the bush with the support of local communities, tribal authorities, and participating schools. So there's 10 schools now within the community, bordering Kruger National Park. I can't wait to hear more about it. I'm going to bring Luane in with us now. Hey, Luane, how are you? Hi, Joe. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's so good to see you. We just had a great, a great uh, share from Felicia and the Black Mambas. And education is so crucial because... Enforcement is important, but if we can reach the next generation about the importance of protecting our ecosystems, that's going to go a long way to challenging our, or to solving some of our conservation issues. So I'm looking forward to your presentation today. Thank you, Joe. All right. If you want to go ahead and share your screen, I'll hide backstage uh, and then we'll ask some questions afterwards. All right. Okay, so hi everybody and Joe, thank you so much for this lovely opportunity that we can share this beautiful day with you guys and to my colleague who just introduced me. Thank you, Felicia. That was such a lovely presentation. So my name is Lee Wayne Maifala and I am the Bush Babies Program Manager. So I'll take you through the program, what it's all about. Basically, we're trying to create the platform for members to grow and mature in nature. So I am the founder of the Bush Parental Education Program, and I'm originally five minutes here, where I am currently. I have not been in nature conservation, and I'm very much passionate about environmental education. I'm currently the Black Mamba Anti Poaching Unit uh, Environmental Officer, educating Education Officer, and I'm an educator and a coordinator by profession. So what is the bush baby or what is a bush baby? As you can see, a bush baby's got very big ears and that is the kind of idea we want. We want the learners, be it a young child or an older person, to really absorb all this conservational facts that we give to them. And, you know, they're having these little eyes. When you tell them that an elephant is not going to kill you, you can just see their eyes popping like this. So that is what we, that's how I actually came about the name of the program. So the program started in 2015, April, with just four schools. And we've then later adopted 10 schools with more than 2,140 learners. Uh, we have 146 nature guardians. These are now the senior bush babies that have been with us for a year. And we have the four, including myself, that would make my the fifth environmental educator. We've got 45 bush grannies uh, with 15 from each community that the environmental monitors are coming from. And we also have a resource center. So basically what happens is there's different stages so we start them young and they go like grade five learners that are like 11 10 11 year olds and then they get to become the bush babies that are now um grade six and seven and after the next year um they then get to become our scouts which we didn't we had the kids for just one year and we're like how is it that we can monitor the program so those were the three stages school-based um programs and they moved over to the bush grannies which is now our highest um age within the program so where are we located like felicia has shown 
on the map. We are here, Belili Nature Reserve. Uh, that is where our base is. But then you can see our local primary schools within the Bapalabora municipality, which is just so close by to the Kruger National Park. The Limpopo province prides itself with wildlife. We have the big five animals right on our doorstep. Yet, as much as it's so close, like 15 kilometers into the Kruger National Park, majority of our locals have never been into the park, nor have they seen an elephant or a rhino in its natural habitat. Palabora is very, very much rich with plant life. It is seen through the cultural, physical, biophysical, social and economical uses and benefits from the locals. Hence, the Bush Babies use environmental education program as a tool, as a tool to educate and build a shared future for all life. So here I'm going to talk about the Maruli, which is very much well known in the local communities. Our team uses an app called Q Field or Avenza, where they locate if it's an environmental issue or indigenous plants. Here we've got in the light green, that's where we have most of our marula, big marees. But we didn't have, we had these um, darker greens as our young seedlings. Um, then one of our learners that research on why do we have so few uh, seedlings or young trees that are growing in the landscape, only to discover that this rodent is actually what was eating up on this. So we're not just only about conservation and, and just teaching, but also to get in or introduce different career paths. We can see here the marula is a very much important plant within this landscape where the locals, our bush grannies, they actually harvest or pick up these fruits. They sell it to home of Amarula where they make the alcohol. And some of the, then they return these pulps back or the nuts back. They break it and they extract the nuts, which they can then press for oil and you make to use beauty products. So they really benefit from this tree. Um, they can make, uh, they can earn an income for from it. Okay, I think my slide is jammed. Okay, did I not go too far? So it does, oh, there we go, it's, it's going again. So, yeah, let me, let me go back. I'm sure there's another and another one. Sorry, now I went 10 times ahead of my slides. So, yeah. What we're having here is we can see the black members that come and interact with the kids in class. I mean, this is now talking about the wildlife component of the work that we do. The members come and they educate the learners about the snares that they find in the reserves. And we're obviously exposing these kids and the bush grannies to what wildlife is all about. You can see here on this bottom left picture, um, this child is so scared to touch this elephant, you know, no matter the guidance, but through the correct information given to them, they were able to change the behavior. Now you can see the kids engaging by themselves with this elephant, you know, and, and we can see that happy face there. So basically one of our goals is to, that we are able to achieve this through changed behavior and knowledge. Not only do we focus on our wildlife, our uh, um, wildlife in the reserves or in protected areas, we also try and encourage the locals to take care of their domestic animals. Here we've got our animal welfare program. We call in experts to come. We have here the SPCA from the Papalabora municipality that is on the donkeys, you know, donkey rides. Um, the five freedom of animals and we actually get the donkey owners involved in the treatment of their donkeys. What we also do is as part of ours, we try to improve the learning environments of our learners where we upgrade the classroom, installing ceilings, you know, their themed on, themes on the walls of their classroom with some nice educational codes. But one of our biggest investments has been at our education center where we've gone solar we're using solar uh, for our power sources and the kids work in the vegetable garden, you know, and they planting, they take care of this garden so that we can introduce this thing of, you know, nature can give you and then you can also take. So it's a give and take kind of a relationship. And the kids also get new skills, as you can see, there are scouts from the garden onto the table and they cooking and learning skills. So you can see here another resource that is very much of importance to us and it's very scarce as the river, it's the water sources. 
So here we've got the Salati River. We are current, we are based here. That's where we would do the mini sess with the learners, where the kids go out and they look at these water condition of the river, which again flows into the um into the Elephants River, which goes through into the Kruger National Park and actually to the Mozambican side. So it's a very it's very much important for us to conserve and try and understand what is happening here although it comes from upstream into our side um already polluted so we just want to educate the learners here about water conservation one other thing or the program that is, has been so successful has been the scouts program you know scout law number six allows us to introduce kids to a scout as a friend to animals and you can see here all these kids nothing gets killed at the center you know when they, whether it's a snake scorpion whatever you're going to be called in to say we found this animal so not just that you know kids have fun they're able to become kids yet they learn and develop themselves to be better citizens and human beings the matriarchs like i've said the oldest wisest um, uh, people to work with in the program you know they've got so much in this knowledge they know which trees to use for whichever you know be it medicinal plants they know which one to use where and how so just for them to come push grannies and educate the kids on how to cook you know sharing stories over the campfire of how the zebra got its stripes you know such such stories that is what we're getting from the bush grannies that in exchange in the indigenous knowledge so in a nutshell the bush babies program has shown us some positive results but I like, I go by this quote by Dr. Seuss that says, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, it is not going to get better. It is not. So unless someone like Lee Wayne cares a whole awful lot, it is not going to get better. It is not. So that would be the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for the opportunity. All right. Excellent. What a great presentation and what a perfect quote uh to sum up all the work with and what a perfect species the bush baby with those big ears and those big eyes to take in uh, all of that new information all right well the chat is open fair game to send in some questions i'm going to bring felicia back in here now and let's get started with, with with a few questions so the first thing i want to know uh and i know our audience wants to know is what led both of you to what you're doing now? What, what inspired you to join these positions? So maybe, Felisa, if you want to start. Um, growing up, I, I always wanted to be a field guide. So my father was working at the Kruger National Park. So on school road, they used to go there and then they will take us to a game drive. And then when I finished my grade 12, there was no money for me to go to Varsity after finishing my grade 12. So there was this uh, program that is like the Bush Baby program. It's called Zimbabwe Foundation. So they told us that they were looking for people to join the Black Mamba to start this uh, Ranger Female anti poaching Unit. So I applied and then I got the job because this is what I've always wanted to do. So this was the was a big opportunity for me. So ever since then, I love what I'm doing. All right, that's awesome. Uh, that's awesome, Felisa. I'm gonna bring Lane back in. Same question to you. What led you to what you're doing now? So what led me to play the role that I'm playing now I guess it's just passion and dedication. You know, I grew up wanting to be a teacher and I remember my grandfather had a little farm. So he was having chickens, you know, geese, pigs and everything. So we had the responsibility during school holidays to maintain all these wildlife, making sure everything was good. So I must also just thank my mother for following and believing in me because everybody in the household would be like, why would you even want to work with frogs like you know what's what's with that so i thank my mom for really supporting me in conservation and my grandfather of course um that has opened that responsibility that i was responsible for those chickens that has led to where i got to be i was also fortunate to work with the national zoological gardens of pretoria which is the pretoria zoo where i started training with my junior nature conservation and, you know, from there on, I was just completely in love with nature. 
uh, then I started going to varsity where I studied nature conservation until I landed in Limpopo province where I met my boss, Mr. Craig Spencer, founder of the Black Mambas. And he was like, is that all you want to do? And I said, no, seeing that there was the missing link. And here I am today. All right. Awesome. Well, while I have you nice in front and center, I want to ask uh, another question. So conservation is full uh, of ups and downs, really high moments and, and low moments. So I wonder what's the best part of your job and maybe what's the most challenging? So my part, that's the best, the best, best part of the job is just waking up, knowing that I'm going to be the change I want to see in those local communities. You know, I want to see people changing their behavior and seeing the kids grow and improving their lives. I think that for me is what I salute myself for. The downs, the downs is the funding. You know, being an NGO is is really, really very hard because now I want to expose all the kids to this nature. Because remember, I do the theory in the classroom. So at the end of the term, I want to take them to actually go see and engage with these elephants. I'm dealing with 2,000 kids. I only have funds to take like 50 or 60 kids into either the park or the reserve, you know. So if we had funding, I think I would be the happiest girl in the world. All right. And I will take a minute here to share the banner for, um, there we go, for blackmamas.org. Uh, you know, every little bit helps. So those who are tuning in, uh, hearing these stories, hearing about the work, anything uh, to help keep the work happening, bring more kids out into the field. It's so, so very important. Uh, I'm going to bring Felicia back in and say Felicia, questions and say the, the best part of your job and maybe the, the, the biggest challenge. <laughs> my biggest part of my job is going to sleep at night knowing that I've saved an, an, an animal. Like the job that I'm doing, I'm enjoying it. And at the end of the day, I'm protecting the environment and the animals at the reserve. So the most challenging thing is because we're working in a big five and we're not armed, sometimes it can be challenging. But we were trained so hope we we know how to react when we come across a uh, big five animals but i'm not saying that you will not be harmed by animals if you are trained but what i'm saying is that is that you must be careful while patrolling you must always use your ears and your eyes to detect the, the, the environment you are in so that's the challenging thing for me all right well i oh, i cannot believe how fast half an hour goes it has been such a pleasure uh, to have both of you joining us uh, representing the Black Mambas and representing the education. Uh, wow, I, I mean, the work that you're doing, I can see why you're proud. I can see you're passionate about what you do. Uh, and, and I know um, that the, the reserves, I know that the, uh, the, the, the kids, the next generation are in good hands and I can't wait to see uh, where you take your programs and we have our World Ranger Day Festival every July 31st, where we celebrate rangers around the world and the important job that they do. So we certainly hope uh, that we have the Black Mambas join us again for that uh, and to continue sharing the work, the important work that is being done. So thank you so much for joining us on the final day of the Global Biodiversity Festival. Happy World Biodiversity Day. Thank you, Joe, thank for the you. lovely opportunity. All right. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of the day and hopefully we talk again soon.